Instant Ralston and Regular Ralston, the hot whole wheat cereals in the red and white checkerboard packages present Space Patrol! High adventure in the wild, vast reaches of space. Missions of daring in the name of interplanetary justice. Travel into the future with Buzz Corey, Commander-in-Chief of the Space Patrol! In today's transcribed Space Patrol adventure, Buzz and Happy have landed their spaceship in a desolate region of Planet X, as directed by the mysterious native Ortho, who is guiding them from a distance by thought waves. Commander, there's Baccarati's ship. I can see it above us, through the Astrodome. Yes, he's coming in to attack. I sure hope Ortho knows what he's doing, telling us to land here. Hey, what happened to Ortho? His face is gone from the viewscope. Ortho! Ortho, can you hear us? It's up to us now. Fire Space Torpedo 1. It's jammed, sir. Fire 2. They're both jammed. And Baccarat is coming in. He's firing at us. And here we are like a sitting duck. Ortho double-crossed us. We'll return in just a moment for today's exciting Space Patrol adventure, The Secret of the Dargo Ruins. Hi, Space Patrollers. This is Dick Tufeld in Los Angeles watching a trial run of the huge Rocket Clubhouse, the biggest prize ever given away. First prize in the Name the Planet contest. And there it goes. Zooming down the highway, pulled along by an honest-to-goodness motor truck. Say, gang, you know how big that Rocket Clubhouse is? It's 35 feet long, big as a freight car. You know how much it weighs? A tremendous 10,000 pounds. And you can win the Rocket Clubhouse, plus the motor truck, plus $1,500 cash, just for naming Planet X. Yes, you and your pals can go rolling off a real adventure in a clubhouse with built-in sleeping bunks, electric lights, equipment lockers, even a cooking stove. Gang, just think of living like a real space patroller in your rocket clubhouse on wheels. And talk about fun. Think of those 750 Schwinn Varsity bicycles being given away as second prizes. Yes, you've got 750 chances to win a Schwinn, the bike with three-speed gear shift, two-wheel handbrakes, and all the other famous Schwinn features. Say, don't forget the 1,000 third prizes. 250 autosonic space rifles, 250 outer space helmets, 250 Space Patrol emergency kits, and 250 wonderful stainless steel Space Patrol wristwatches. So stand by for the latest news about how to enter your name for Planet X in the Name the Planet contest. And now, today's Space Patrol adventure, The Secret of the Dargo Ruins. Commander Corey and Happy are now on the man-made planet Terra, where Buzz is organizing a task force for an assault on Planet X. Although Buzz and Happy wrecked Prince Baccarati's delicate and complex defense control monitor in Baccarati's castle, the space patrol forces dare not make an all-out attack on installations on Planet X, for to do so would endanger thousands of innocent natives forced into labor by the evil prince and also would harm hundreds of still technicians held captive on the remote planet. Right now in the Commander's Central Office and Space Patrol Headquarters, Cadet Happy is sorting out all available information on Planet X installations. Sector G22 Chemical Processing Plant. Let's see, that's about... Uh, I... How are you doing, Happy? Oh, it's pretty slow work, sir, but I'm nearly through all the data in file E. And that big blow-up map of Planet X sure makes it a lot easier to fit things into a pattern. Uh-huh. You can see now what a big job this is and why we can't launch an attack until every detail is worked out in advance. Yes, sir. Baccarati's got plants and installations scattered all over Planet X. And what a whopper of a planet that is. If this work wasn't so urgent, I'd like to turn it over to a couple of aides and blast off for Jupiter. Jupiter? Yes, Jupiter Patrol just reported the biggest robbery to hit the outer planets in years. More than one million credits. Wow. Two men walked into the home office of Jupiter Expansion Corporation, picked up the credits, and walked out. Six armed guards just stood around while the bandits helped themselves to the payroll. You mean they didn't even try to stop the bandits? No, and the strange thing is the guards themselves admitted it with no alibis. That is strange. The payroll was for several hundred construction workers and engineers who had been working on different Jupiter moons for six months. The men are due in at Jupiter City tomorrow. Oh, it's on Major Robertson's circuit, Commander. I'll get it, huh? Corey here. Uh, Commander, Jupiter headquarters space phone a new lead on the robbery. Yeah? A uh, space patrol agent found a gas cartridge concealed in the room near the vault. 
That might explain why the guards didn't offer resistance. What was it? Diphenazone. Diphenazone? Yeah, that's right. And we got a description of one of the bandits. Four of the guards positively identified him as Slag Cronin. Nice work, Robbie. How soon can you take over up here? In about five minutes. Good. Corey out. I'm happy you know who was behind that Jupiter robbery. Who, sir? Baccarati. Slag Cronin is one of his men. But what about the guards? Were they working for Baccarati, too? The guards could be entirely innocent. They were affected by Diphenazone. What's that, sir? According to a space surgeon who was among the men we brought back from Planet X, Diphenazone is a gas developed by Baccarati's pal, Dr. Malengro. It's odorless and renders a person completely unable to reason. Malengro must have developed some sort of counteractive medicine that made Baccarati's men immune to the gas. No wonder the bandits got away with it so easily. I'm turning this end of our work over to Robbie. You and I are going after Slag Cronin. Great. Uh, but how do we know where to look? Baccarati needs that money to rebuild his defense equipment. From Baccarati's viewpoint, the safest place for that money right now is on Planet X. Billions of miles from Terra in Baccarati's castle on Planet X, Dr. Malengro ruefully surveys the smashed controls of the elaborate defense system. He turns as Prince Baccarati enters from his communications room in the lofty tower. It will take weeks to repair, Your Highness. Even if we had the technicians on hand to do the work. We don't have to worry, Malengro. But, Excellency, without our defenses, the Space Patrol can attack Planet X at will. I've just heard from Slack Cronin. He's on his way here with a million credits. What good are United Planets credits here on Planet X? Don't you see? Cronin can hide out here. Then, as my agents make contacts with engineers on the other planets, we can pay them to construct new control. Oh, and bring them here in spaceships. Exactly. They can be made in sections and assembled here in the castle by a few men. The engineers that actually construct the equipment won't even need to know that it will be used against the space patrol. Then Cronin is coming right here to the castle. No. I ordered him to hide out in the Dargo ruins, 500 miles to the east. But, Excellency, why should he hide out? Because we can be sure that we won't be getting a visit from a space patrol ship. I'm not expecting an attack so soon, but Corey may... Send a scout ship to see what we're up to. Yes, that's true, Your Highness. As a matter of fact, Corey has already blasted off from Terra. For Planet X? I don't know. My agents couldn't find it out. We'll be notified of his vector, however. How fortunate that Corey didn't have time to wreck our spaceophone equipment. Yes. And with our spies still operating on the other planets, we'll know if Corey or any of his ships are on their way here. Your Highness, if you'll pardon my saying so... Wouldn't it be better to have Cronin bring the credits to one of your other installations? Why the Dargo ruins? They are hundreds of miles from any of my factories or installations. And they look like what they are, the ruined buildings of a vanished civilization. No space patrol ship is going to land and prowl around there. I understand. A brilliant decision, Excellency. Of course. Now, let's check with our agents. Perhaps they've discovered something new about Quarry. Many hours later, the Terra 5, with Commander Corey at the controls, is far beyond the orbit of Pluto, headed for Planet X. Using secret code and scrambled spaceophone circuits, Cadet Happy has contacted Space Patrol headquarters of the various planets. And now, to prevent Baccarati from picking up any suspicious signal, Happy has cut off the spaceophone transmitter. Nobody sighted Slag Cronin so far, sir. Sooner or later, he's going to contact Baccarati, or Baccarati will attempt to contact him. I want to be in a position to intercept those calls. Sir, I've been thinking about this native ortho that uh, that helped us get off Planet X the last time. What about him? Well, I just can't get over the way he was able to project thoughts and images. Well, we do it in a crude sense with spaceophones and viewscopes and our brainograph. Yeah, but he just uses his mind. How come we can't do it? And perhaps if we tried it for as many generations as his people have, we could do the same thing. Well, Commander, m- maybe we could get ortho to help us some more. No, Hap. Our battle is with Baccarati. All those people have isolated themselves because they want to live in peace. Besides, Hap, just how would you suggest contacting Ortho? Yeah, that's right. We don't even know where this Golden Valley is. Right. Now they'll concentrate on Slag Cronin and Prince Baccarati. Thousand DUs toward Planet X, a spaceship with a black falcon on its hull, prowls the dark void. Intently, Prince Baccarati and Dr. Malengro scan the viewscope. 
Corey's ship crossed the Pluto orbit hours ago, so he must be coming to Planet X. I wonder what his plan is this time. Well, he won't get a chance to put it in operation, Malengro. You think he's after Slag Cronin? If he is, it's a stupid move. Cronin is already hiding out the Dark Old Ruins. Corey could never find Your him. Your Highness, look. That faint dot on the viewscope. It must be a spaceship. Maintain this exact distance. And we'll cut on the radar foil in case he picks us up. He'll never be able to pinpoint our position. All clear in the viewscope, sir. Good. We'll come low on the dark side of Planet X and find our way by infrared viewscope. My friends from another planet, listen to me. Hey, what? It's ortho. You are in grave danger. Commander, he's doing it again, like he did the last time. His face is appearing in the viewscope. Yes, Ortho. You're contacting us all right. What is it? You are in dire peril. We expect to be on Planet X. You are in danger out in space. I sense it. It is coming closer. Hey, he's right, sir. The rear viewscope. See it? A radar foil blur. One of Bakrati's ships is sighted us. And we can't tell what his range is. Not with that radar foil confusing our viewscopes. Thanks for the warning, Ortho. You'll just have to outrun them. Let me help you land on the planet. I will guide you in safely. You don't understand. If we land, he could blast us easily. I can protect you, believe me. Your enemy will never find you. The blur's getting bigger, Commander. Baccarati's gaining. All right, Ortho. Looks like this is your party. What are your instructions? Come directly to the center of the planet as you see it. You will see a broad river flowing south between two ranges of high mountains. Then what? Far to the east of the river is a desert then bleak hills, barren and desolate. But beyond those hills is the land of the Lumens, our golden valley. There you will be safe. That is fine, my friends. Hold that altitude. There are the barren hills, but I don't see any golden valley. Land your ship just after you cross the hills. Ortho, we don't see anything that looks like a golden valley. It's just a stretch of barren, rocky land. Hey, Commander, that ship doesn't seem to be gaining on us, judging by the size of the radar foil blur. Probably waiting to see what we're going to do. Land your ship. Set it down quickly. Commander, I can't see anything in the rear view scope. In that case, we might as well follow Ortho's directions. Stand by for landing, Happy. We'll make this quick. Fire nose rockets. Full repeller, Ray. Stand by to fire space guns, Happy. Standing by, sir. Hey, what happened to Ortho? His face is gone from the viewscope. Ortho! Ortho, can you hear us? Commander, there's Baccarati's ship. I can see it through the Astrodome. Fire space torpedo one. It's jammed, sir. Fire two. They're both jammed, and Baccarati's coming in. He's firing at us. And here we are like a sitting duck. Ortho double-crossed us. We'll return to Space Patrol in just a moment. Space Patrollers, attention. Here's how to enter your name for Planet X in the Name the Planet contest. Just go with Mom or Dad to your Weatherbird shoe store. The Weatherbird shoe man will give you a free prize, a swell interplanetary coin album with three real space coins inside, glowing silver-colored coins. Big as a half dollar with swell designs of planets on them. And also inside the album, your Name the Planet Contest entry blank with directions for submitting your name for Planet X. Now, gang, if there's no Weatherbird shoe store in your neighborhood, find out where else to get your coin album and entry blank by looking on the back of a package of good, hot Ralston, either instant or regular. The new package with a picture of the Commander Corey or Cadet Happy on the front. But hurry... See your Weatherbird shoe man or check a hot Ralston package and enter the Name the Planet contest now. And now back to the secret of the Dargo ruins. Following the instruction of the mysterious native of Planet X, Ortho the Lumen, Commander Corey and Cadet Happy landed their spaceship on the planet with Baccarati's ship close behind them. Through his straight power of thought and image transference, Ortho had assured Buzz they would land safely in a golden valley. Instead, their ship is an obvious target on the bleak, rugged ground in the desolate region of Planet X. 
Evidently abandoned by their would-be protector, Buzz and Abby vainly try to fire space guns at Baccarati as the evil prince rains explosives all around them. In Baccarati's ship, the prince and Dr. Malengro make repeated passes over the Terra 5. You made me miss them again, Malengo. Can't you keep the ship on a steady run? Something's wrong with the viewscope target finder. Well, I'll get them this time. I did it! A direct hit. I got Corey at last. Your marksmanship is astounding, sire. Do you see that? Not a trace of the ship remains. Not a trace. Do you realize what this means? I prefer to hear the tidings from you, Excellency. Without Corey... It will take the Space Patrol weeks to prepare an attack. By that time, I'll have my defenses back in operation. Platex will again be an impregnable stronghold. Excellent. And from then on, I shall resume my plan. Now, let's go to the Dargo ruins and get Slack Cronin and my million credits. As Baccarati's ship roars away toward the northeast, a cloud of dust settles over the place where the prince had seen Buzz Corey's ship disappear in a blinding flash. Yet, at this same moment, two miles away, Buzz and Happy stand unhurt, peering out of the viewport of an entirely undamaged Terra 5. Smoke and rockets. Can you beat that? He fires half a dozen torpedoes and then scoots away. He must be out of ammunition, Happy. What a terrible shot he is. Uh, not that I'm complaining, of course. But did you notice all of his torpedoes hit in the same place about two miles away? Yeah. All I can say is it's sure a lucky break. After the way this ortho deserted us and him and his golden... V- Commander, look. I was just noticing, Happy. A minute ago, there was nothing out there but gray rocks and desolation. Now, trees and grass... The flowers. It's beautiful. The Golden Valley. But why didn't we see it before? I guess we were so concerned about Baccarati that... Hey, look out there. Someone coming toward the ship. It's Ortho. The same face we saw in the viewscope. Uh Uh-huh. Beard, robe, and all. It looks like he's waiting for us to come out. Let's go, Hap. We owe him an apology. Apology? What for? For bringing us down here so that Baccarati could blast Leave your ray gun in the ship. I don't think we'll need weapons here. And it might offend Ortho. Yes, sir. But if he tries any more tricks... Let's give him a chance to explain, Hap. Open the hatch. Yes, sir. Before we open the outer hatch, Happy, remember that Ortho can tell what we're thinking. He probably knows I'm telling you this right now. Yes, sir. I understand. I am Ortho. Yes, Ortho. We recognized you from your projected image. First, I feel I owe you an apology. I know you thought that I had deceived you. That's right. We did for a while. It was necessary in order to confuse your enemy. My mind had to project an image of your spaceship some distance away. And at the same time, conceal the actual ship. To perform this enormous concentration... I had to withdraw my thoughts from contact with your minds. Oh, so that was it. Baccarati thought he saw our ship clear over there. Yes. And when the last explosive hit, I merely stopped thinking of the image. It vanished. This sort of thing is new and strange to us, Ortho, but we're very grateful. I know your motive is to drive these evil men from our world. Planet X, as you call it. Well, if our guns hadn't jammed, we'd have taken care of part of the job right then. I know. I hope you won't be offended, but I am responsible for that. Huh? You mean you can jam a weapon just by thinking about it? In some cases, I can control certain electrochemical processes if the distance is not too great. In this instance, I was able to inhibit the explosion of your space gun. Well, yeah, but why? Why didn't you keep Baccarati's weapons from working? Well, Happy, after all, Ortho made Baccarati believe he'd finished us. That's quite a favor. Well, sure, but I thought Ortho wanted to get rid of Baccarati, too. My people want only to rid this planet of the evil Baccarati causes. We do not believe in taking life. I do not blame you for trying to use your weapons. You were not convinced that I could save you. Yes, that's right. However, I knew you were in no danger. So I prevented you from taking human life needlessly. I'm in favor of what you did, Ortho. 
Our aim is to capture Baccarati and his men alive. We have a process of treating criminals, medically and psychologically, to remove their criminal tendencies. It's completely painless, and in fact, the criminal isn't even aware of the time it takes to effect a cure. I know that, Commander. You mean you know everything we're thinking? Uh, everything we know? Not quite everything. That would take more time. But I do know what is uppermost in your mind. Oh, then we really don't need to say a word. No, except that you probably feel more at ease if we exchange ideas through speech. Since you're not used to having thoughts placed directly in your mind by others. It is rather startling. But tell me about this valley. How does it happen we didn't see until a few minutes ago? That was the result of the combined concentration of all my people. We know when strangers are approaching. We conjure up a mass image of forbidding terrain. For centuries, this has kept the more primitive marauding tribes from invading our valley. Well, where are the rest of your people? Deep in the forest of the valley. I would invite you to visit us, but I sense that the commander is concerned about a problem. Yes, Otho, you're right. You came here searching for a man who has stolen something of great value to your civilization. The man is called Slag Cronin. That's right. Then he is on Planet X. Yes. Several of us sensed his evil presence a few hours ago. Where is he? In Baccarati's castle? No. He is hiding in the ruins of an ancient civilization about 800 miles northeast of here. The Dargo Ruins. The Dargo Ruins? Yes. Immense buildings of red stone filled with statues and carvings. You will find them impressive, but grotesque. Be very careful, my friends. We will, Otto. And we're very grateful you saved our lives. But at no risk of my own. You are risking yours to bring peace to our planet. Listen, and I will tell you how to find the dark old world. Hundreds of miles away from the Golden Valley, a man stands between the pillars of an ancient temple, chipped and worn by time. He watches as a spaceship lands beside his own. Two men get out and come toward him up the temple steps. Well, Cronin, where is it? I've got it. Don't worry. You will address me as your highness. Now, quickly, give me the credit. Just a minute, your highness. You heard him, Cronin. Do as you're told. Look, I'm talking to the prince. Your highness, I'm taking my share of the loot and getting off this goopy planet now. How dare you? Your share of the loot. Haven't I protected you from the space patrols? I want 100000 and the use of that spaceship, the one I came here in. Why, of all the insolence... Look, Baccarati, I can keep the whole million. Remember, I'm the only one that knows where it is. All right, Cronin. You can have a hundred thousand. Now, where is the money? Right inside the temple, under a flagstone. All right. Take me to it, quickly. Yeah, this way. Yeah. It's under this one. Well, lift it up. Help him, Malangro. Yes, Your Highness. Here it comes. By the way, Cronin, where is your partner? I don't have a partner, not anymore. He met with an accident. Oh, and now you don't have to split with him. Yeah, that's right. Well, there's the money. One million credits. Splendid. Ooh. And now, Dr. Melengro, you will notice that I don't have to split with Cronin. Nicely done, Your Highness. The gun butt dazed him, but, but I don't think you'll be unconscious long. Perhaps we should pick up the money and get to the ship. I'll get the money. We'll leave Cronin here. You take his spaceship to the castle, and I'll fly my own. Very well, Your Highness. All right, Broccarati, stay right where you are. But Corey! He can't be alive. He can't be. I'll take that gun, Melengro. You'll have to catch me first. After I'm happy, I'll take care of Baccarati. He's behind that idol, Commander. I see him. He thought that door back there would open. Come back here, Malangro. All right, Commander. Hey, hey, quit pushing that idol. Run, Your Highness. Come back here, Baccarati. Commander, the idol is falling. Oh, Commander, you, you all right? Help me roll that chunk of rock off my legs. Yes, sir. <laughs> No bones broken. Oh, 
my ankle. Yeah, you stay I, here. I, I'll go after Baccarati and Malengro. Hey, look. They're nearly to their ship. They can stop them with a the ray gun blast. What oh, is fired? Mine doesn't work either, sir. You're both knocked down pretty hard. Maybe the fall wrecked the guns. Or it's ortho again. Well, doesn't he know that all these guns would do is to make Baccarati unconscious without hurting him? He may be cutting off all weapons just as a precaution. Doggone it, sir. Baccarati and Malengro got away. Yes, but we got what we came for. We've captured Slag Cronin and recovered the million credits. Let's get Slag back to our ship, Hap. Yes, sir. Uh, but what if Baccarati blasted before we get to it? I think our friend Ortho is taking care of that. Well, I'll bet Baccarati is hopping mad. Hey, he was probably counting on this million credits to rebuild his defenses. After we return the money to Jupiter, we'll go back to Terra and plan our attack on Planet X. Hey, look, Commander. Uh, look what's all over the floor. Jewels. They must have been inside the idol. There's a fortune here, abandoned by the race that built this temple. Wow. I'll bet there's more than a million credits worth. If Baccarati had known about this, uh, he could have saved himself a lot of trouble. Let's go, Hap. We've got work to do. An action preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol adventure in just a moment. Hi, Space Patrollers. This is Commander Corey. You know, gang, the way I warm up inside when it's chilly outside is with the super cereal that helps to supercharge you. Good hot Ralston. So why don't you try it today? Instant or regular Ralston? Look for them in the new red and white checkerboard packages with a picture of Happy or Me on the outside. And know what you'll find inside? A swell interplanetary space coin. Big as a half dollar, made of husky plastic with designs of planets on them in glowing space colors. Midnight blue coins, sun gold coins, and jet black coins, too. You can get even more terrific space coins, plus a handsome album to keep them in, along with your Name the Planet contest entry at your Weatherbird shoe store. So hurry, get a package of good hot Ralston today and start building up your space coin collection now. And now, a preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol adventure. Buzz and Happy are in the refrigeration control compartment of their spaceship on a flight to Venus. The air is rapidly leaking from their ship when they discover a gigantic worm clinging to the wall of the ship. Take this bar and knock it loose, Hap. Yes, sir. It won't come loose, and it's as hard as metal. You're right, Hap, and that's what it eats. It's feeding on the endurium bulkhead. That's how the air is escaping. Smoking rockets, Commander. It's eating clear through the hull. Get into your helmet or we'll suffocate. Be sure to join us again next week for the thrilling story, The Iron Eaters of Planet X, when Instant Ralston and Regular Ralston again present Space Patrol! Space Patrol, created by Mike Moser, starring Ed Cameron as Commander Corey and Lynn Osborne as Cadet Happy, was written by Lou Houston, produced and directed by Larry Robertson, executive producer Mike Devery. <laughs> Other players were Baylor Kovach, Ken Mayer, and Norman Jolly. Dick Tufeld speaking. Now, don't forget to tune in next Saturday and every Saturday when Instant Ralston and Regular Ralston again present Space Patrol! Dick Tufeld reporting on America's most heavily armed fighter interceptor, the Northrop Air Force Scorpion F-89D. In a moment, we'll hear from the test pilot on this plane, Bob Love, Korean jet ace with a record of six MiGs in six weeks. Primary job of the Scorpion is to protect our country from invading aircraft. Speed, more than 600 miles per hour. Weight, 20 tons. Now, Bob Love, recorded at Edwards Air Force Base. You know, a fella has to be in top condition to test fly a fast aircraft such as the Scorpion. And that's why I always make it a rule, sleep well and eat well. So, for breakfast, I pick a cereal like Rice Chex or Wheat Chex. They're chuck full of energy and really taste good. You'll like them. No other cereal, puffed or flaked, contains so much nourishment in such concentrated bite-sized form. So take a tip from Bob Love, Phil Houghton, and other top test pilots. Make your cereals Rice Chex and Wheat Chex. <laughs> 
Be sure to see another exciting Space Patrol story on your local ABC television station. Consult your local paper for time and channel. This program is broadcast to our armed forces overseas through the worldwide facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. Space Patrol came to you transcribed from Hollywood. This is ABC Radio Network. <laughs>